Hey guys, here's step one of building your own website. You're going to register a domain name and sign up for shared hosting. You already know what a domain name is. It's the address for a website, so something like byu.edu. A domain tells your browser where to go to find some information. But it turns out that a domain by itself isn't enough to have a website. You'll also need a place to store all the stuff you're going to put there. That's what hosting is. You can think about a domain like the address of your house. It's a specific location that your GPS can take you to, but it's not actually the house itself. Hosting is the plot of land where you'll build the house, and your website will be the house. You can build multiple domains in a single hosting account, sort of like adding an apartment building in your backyard. But just like real life, if you build too much, you can run out of space in your hosting account. But that's not a problem we're going to run into for this class. There are any number of places you can buy domains and hosting, but I'll recommend reclaimhosting.com, which is a company that focuses on students and educators. Once you're here, go ahead and click Sign Up. You'll see a number of options under Shared Hosting. Go ahead and choose the $30 option, clicking Sign Up. Here's where you're going to choose your domain name. You can go ahead and type in anything you can think of to see if it's available. So if I wanted to get briancroxel.com, well, it turns out somebody already owns it. It's me. I could choose to do something else instead, maybe briancroxel.name, and that is available. So go ahead and search until you find something you like with the top level domain. Normally .com, .net, and .org are the most popular, so you might want to stick to those. Once you got the domain that you'd like, go ahead and click continue. There's nothing to change on this page unless you wanted to add multiple years to your hosting, but you don't at this point. So just go ahead and click continue again. On this screen, you'll want to turn on ID protection. So go ahead and click that. It turns out that registering a domain is similar in other ways to buying property. There are public records of who owns what property. Instead of going to City Hall to find out who owns what, you could instead go to whois.com and get name, telephone, and addresses of owners. So let's check byu.edu. Here you can see who owns BYU's website. Maybe you don't want that information to be public. And so that's why you want identity protection. On my website, for example, where I have that turned on, you don't see my name, apart from obviously in the URL, but you don't see my name, you don't see my address, you don't see my phone number. So that's why you want to turn on ID protection. It doesn't cost you anything, so just go ahead and add it. Then click continue again. Here's a summary of what you're going to be paying for. $30 for a year of shared hosting and $15 for a year of domain registration. Go ahead and click checkout. Here you'll put in information about yourself as well as how you would like to pay. You're probably going to want to turn off the mailing list option at the bottom. Then agree to the terms of service and click complete order. Once you've finished paying for the website, make sure you go to the email address you used for registering the account and look for a verification email. If you don't see it, check your spam folder. They come very quickly. You'll need to verify before you do anything else on this assignment. And that's it. Step one is done. You have registered a domain.